All right, we're going to go to our movie review. The Promising Young Woman. A, uh, a directorial debut of Promising Young Woman. So what did you make of Promising Young Woman? Well, this film actually is over a year old. It's debuted at the Sundance Film Festival in January 2020. Thanks, and, COVID. Uh, no, no, that was before COVID. Yes, oh, I know. And then afterwards, <laughs> it didn't get released. Well, right? yes, yes, we were uh, yeah, going to get yeah, it released, right. and we were not right, going right. to have to pay for and early access. So to it's rent available it. to rent on demand. That's what, the way you're going to have to watch it. And as, as you said, this film marks the feature film de directorial debut. Uh, hard to say, of Emerald Fennell, um, who also wrote the original screenplay uh, of the movie. And I have to say, this is quite a whopping debut <laughs> for feature films if this was her first one. I think I found it to be a powerful story with a big message, but at the same time, very much in control and understated with even a few comic touches thrown in from time to time in the story, though very dark. I will say, uh she uh, uh, worked on the first season of Killing Eve. That was yes, she, I have read that. This is her first feature. This is a feature film, but yeah. uh, she sort of got famous. Uh, I mean, she's been yeah. famous. And she's done a lot of television shows. She's done Call the Midwife, but yes, uh, she yeah. sort of broke out with the uh, first season of yeah, Killing no, Eve. No, this was her. She, this is not her. Like this isn't the first thing she's ever done. No, and I think mm -hmm. Killing Eve says a lot about this movie. Yes, I mean, you I know, think it's. I, uh, I think it'll inform what you think about yes. this, or, or whether you would like this movie. Um, it has received wide acclaim, both for her film and for the lead actress uh, Carrie Mulligan who is quite brilliant as the main character, Cassie. Um, in one sentence, um, this story is about a woman who seeks to avenge her best friend, Nina, a victim of rape. Um, Nina was the victim of rape and she's seeking to avenge uh, what happened to her. And um, it is a sad but often true story of how the system works in the favor of the male perpetrators and against the female victim. And that is really at the core, you know, that is what the movie is about. Um, Cassie seeks her revenge by going out to, this is, you know, start, the movie starts out this way. She seeks her revenge by going out to nightclubs and pretending to get just obliteratedly drunk um, you know, fall down drunk. Um, and inevitably, some, some young man who thinks he's really a good guy gallantly offers uh, to get her safely home and then proceeds to take advantage of a highly intoxicated woman who is too drunk to give consent. Um, once she has this guy where she wants him, she lets him know that she isn't drunk. And at that point, she pretty much terrorizes him. Um, however, um, I, I want to make a point about this movie because I didn't really know. I was kind of scared going into it, watching it. I wasn't sure what I was getting into. But I want to point out that it is not physical and violence she engage, uh, engages in. And this isn't like a bloody movie, violent movie at all. It's all about the psychology of the revenge and making these men that she, she then makes victims, see how, just what crummy individuals, that they aren't good, nice guys. Uh, she helps them realize that. Um, whether it sticks or not, I don't know. But I read one quote about the movie that said, um, pretty uh, promising young woman um, is to the potential race, rapist what fatal attraction was to adulterers. And that is it gets, you know, you get in their head. Um, I, so I don't want people to avoid this movie because you think it might be violent or terror filled. It's not at all. It is dark, uh, but it, it's not bloody. Um, so as the story unfolds, we have Cassie, she meets this doctor in a coffee shop where she works. Um, and this doctor went to med school with her. By the way, she dropped out of med school um, because she was traumatized. Uh, at least that's what we eventually find out. They begin a relationship and actually a relationship that appears healthy. Although you're always asking yourself in the back of your mind, is this one of the guys she's setting up and we don't know it, you know? No um, doctors are uh, good people, so. Yeah, good. all right, we won't go there. <laughs> but it brings back, um, it, meeting this guy and kind of reliving their med school days, brings back her desire to make all the people pay that contributed to Nina's demise. And by the way, we don't really know what happened to Nina. 
uh, as the story goes on, um, you, it, it's never explicitly ex explained. Um, but as it goes on, you do so. You do assume that Nina committed suicide because she couldn't live with what happened to her as a medical student, and then nobody, you know, really cared uh, what happened other than Cassie. Uh, so one by one, Cassie goes after each of the parties involved, um, and you know, does something to just t pretty much um, lead them to terror and fear. Uh, including the female dean of the medical college, um, one of their best friends who was part of their clique, a lawyer who defended the accused and got him off, and eventually to the whole group of men who were involved the evening of the crime. Um, and the only one in that group who actually um, was somewhat sorrowful and forget, you know, just had paid the price, let's put it that way, was the lawyer um uh, and that's not that that comes back at the end to be important although at the time i don't think you really uh think about it um so the movie is uh about this rape story uh that i've i've explained here but it really is also about the trauma involved uh with cassie and actually everyone ultimately in the story I mean, she is traumatized and she traumatizes others. Um, and the thing is, as the story moves on, um, despite the fact that you know inside you, you want these people to be punished and you're kind of on Cassie's side, you start finding yourself just kind of running out of patience with her and sort of thinking, God, just please move on, you know, drop this, forget it. And in fact, it starts making you not like the movie. <laughs> You don't know all the facts uh, necessarily, and um, you're just tired of her uh, unflinchingly going after uh, these people. Um, and, and you start feeling like, you know, you're really not going to change what happened, and you're really not going to change what happens in the future. And basically, um, and you just need to move on. And basically, in one scene where she's meeting with Nina's mother, um, Nina's mother basically tells her that, you know, stop this, move on. Um, so anyway, uh, just to, I'm going to just sum up uh, quickly and then you can uh, make your comments. Um, the movie is wrapped up, one, you start feeling this way about the movie, but then it wraps up in a rather twisted and intriguing way. And um, this ending, which I'm not going to tell, um, I'm not going to do a spoiler this time. Uh, some people like it from what I've read, um, you know, of reviews and reactions to the movie. Some people like this ending, some hate this ending and think it ruins the whole thing. For me, it made the movie. And um, that's about all I'm, I'm going to uh, give away. I, 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 and, you know, now I'll turn well, it over I'll, to I'll you. say the ending is what makes it. And uh, that's probably why I, I grade it so high. I, now I, have always been pro the Shakespearean tragedy and essentially <laughs> this is a Shakespearean tragedy and it's yeah. all its glory, uh, really. Nobody comes out the winner, do <laughs> no, they? No, <laughs> that's, you know, this is very Macbeth or Hamlet or, you know, mm -hmm. I could list about 50 others, but um, I, I think that's what makes this movie. Um, I loved Carrie Milligan in it. I thought she was very impressive in her role. Uh, now, um, a little bit with the mental terrorization. My only problem was, I, I feel like one of those dudes who would have taken her home, probably was a complete psychopath. And would have killed her. And probably would have snapped her neck in a half yeah. second. Uh, Carrie is not a large woman. She's not that imposing. In, in fact, yeah. she looks like she weighs about 90 pounds in this film. Well, so, I, and I also thought, I mean, this is one of the, a little bit of the weakness of the, of the script too, I would say. Everything kind of fell into place always for her. Yes. You know, the guys were always doing exactly what she thought. The reaction of the people she went after was exactly what she thought it would be. And no one ever well, that's what, let her down in uh, that way. You know? I think at some point, you know, you yeah. probably it get- It wasn't the, realistic, yeah, is you, what you're saying. You probably get the rapey dude who doesn't really want to be a rapey dude, but is. 
But at some point, you come across, you know, Jeffrey Dahmer, who ends up slicing you into bits and keeping you in his freezer. You know, it just seems like a dangerous game to be playing, uh, especially as you're going on this mission solo by yourself. And actually, throughout the film, I kept thinking something was going to happen to her. I kept thinking that exact thing, that one of these guys is going to go, you know, nuts and killer yes. you know and um anyway that that's always kind of there to uh, uh that these guys aren't so stupid yes <laughs> you know? uh, i wanted to say i thought a couple other performances were pretty good uh jennifer coolidge who uh the plays the mom in it and yes you, you oh, can't even yeah. recognize her because yeah. uh anyone who knows jennifer coolidge uh she's a very um physical let's say uh sort of funny woman. She, uh, her most famous thing is in Legally Blonde, where she plays the nail stylist. Yes. But I, I mean, she yeah. does a lot of physical type comedy and she just plays- She's always good. Yeah. Though. She's a great she, actress. No, she's a great actress. Yeah. But this is the first time I'd seen her really, really play a yeah. serious, uh, there's no physical comedy in this role. It's She's a sort of depressed mother because her daughter- No she, sort of about it. Is going nuts. Yeah. Uh, She's also in a lot of Christopher Guest movies, uh, yeah, you know. Right. She's just that type of actress uh, on the screen. I'm sure she's done, you know, theater productions and stuff where she plays more serious characters. But I just thought she played the mom uh, dynamitely, and it's yeah. really a uh, a different sort of style that uh, she adapts in this than what probably anybody has ever uh, seen her in. Uh, I also thought Laverne Cox uh, yeah. as a coffee shop owner was she really good. She was good too. And really she was good. the one that kind of lent the comic yes. touch to it. That's you know? I think it needed a little bit of that uh, yeah. style of humor in it. Well, to, it brought some normality yes. to it, you know, and Laverne Cox can bring normality. It brought normality to it because here she was owning this cute little coffee shop and Cassie worked in it and everything seemed very normal. Yes. And so I thought Laverne Cox was, and also uh, he didn't have much of a role, but uh, Max Greenfield, uh, your boy's uh, best, the doctor's best friend. Oh, yes. Who plays the complete yeah. slime ball. Yeah. Who's the one who yeah. recorded the uh, said rape scene and yes. stuff. Right. Uh it, it was a probably a two scene five minute performance, but, but he did pretty he well. Came he came in and was yeah. uh, he, he scored about fifteen points in about yeah. one minute of uh, scene time there. Well, so. I, you know, what, one of the weaknesses is a bit of the script and just the assumption that everything would fall in place like it did in the script. Um, but the acting was not one of the weaknesses. No, the was, actors were I thought quite everybody good. Was everybody was good. Really in it. good. Yeah. Um, I, I think my favorite scene in the movie, you know, you use in quotes. If you have a favorite scene. But I did think uh, when she uh, seduces a dean's daughter into the car yeah. to take her to the, uh, you know, music video shoot for her yeah. favorite band and then goes and uh, hammers the dean with this. And the that dean all of a sudden with the dean was starts great. to freak out. Connie Britton played yes, the dean. Yes, Connie and Britton. She was good. Yeah, too. she was excellent too. I mean, you just saw in her face where she went from just your standard yes. admin. Blah, yes. blah, 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 to suddenly being totally terrorized yes, by the fact that knowing, her daughter was going to Knowing get the raped. actual truth, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, she has to go from yes. college administrator who shoves yes. sort of everything under the rug because yeah. Dr. Fancy Pants is going to make the university a lot of money <laughs> or donate to the university yeah. a lot of money. And then it, when it becomes uh, more real for then terror. And I thought that was probably that the best. That was one of the best scenes in the movie. You're the right. best sequences yes. of the film. I, I yeah. really, I, I thought this film was done well. Uh, I, I also liked it because I thought it was more in the stylistic range of a 90s film, sort of an independent drama that uh, really never gets made uh, now. Um, so I, I enjoyed that. I just wish it had gone a little more hardcore, like those 90s dramas. Um, you know, it, it definitely had a little feel of uh, uh, 13 and kids, uh, Catherine Hardwick uh, sort of style film. Uh, it, it did feel a little Ger Greta Gerwig too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Templates into the late mm -hmm. 2000s. I, I, but uh, I just thought it should go... If it's going to push this edge of rape and how the males get by with it, I thought it should have gone full bore into pushing that edge. It felt a little uh, 2020 where we talk about it, but we don't actually go, 
real dark into it. I just felt this film should be a, you watch it once and you pretty much never want to see it again, much like Fatal Attraction. You watch Fatal Attraction once. You, you, you don't are, really want to watch it again, You are you? pining <laughs> to go back and rewatch that film yeah. over and over and over again. Yeah. And that's where I get... Um, but you know what? I thought this was subtle. And that's why I would watch it again. Because yes. it didn't gross me out or make yes. me feel really... Uh, like I didn't really want to have the feelings again that I had while I watched it. I, well, I think that's I liked probably what makes it a little more charming and gives it a little more. Uh, well, I don't know if I'd say charming, no. but it, it it has some you know funny and humorous yes. parts. Yes, it does. Which gives it a little more dark side of uh, let's say like a Sofia Coppola or a Wes Anderson style film where it's dark but it has some humorous elements in it. Yeah. Just sort of. Uh, not make you not want to watch the film again. Um, the other question I had, I was curious, do you think once she met uh, said doctor in the coffee shop, she unfolded the plan from the start or did it take seeing the tape? I, I couldn't get a grasp if she knew he was a slime ball too and she was just using him. Well, that's what I said. I always had in the back of my mind that she might, and yet their relationship seemed kind of normal. And I just, as it as the story went on, I, I didn't actually think she made the connection with the fact that he might have been one of the guys at the party. Okay. See, I couldn't. I, at first, I did think she was going to use him for you know in a bad way, but then as it went on, I think she kind of found a little normalcy in her relationship with him. And so I think it was more that the tape uh, yeah. or the, you know, brought it Finally back. put it all. And kind of, into... yeah, she came. See, I now, could... I think she may have already had a plan in mind. Oh, yes. I think she was setting something up. I mean, uh, I think for years she yes. had been thinking about it. Uh, well, I think you got that from the uh, fake Facebook uh, profile. Yes. She yeah. created yeah. a friender or whatever yeah. it was. Um, but I, I just... That probably I couldn't quite figure out because um, I, we didn't say, but she's a highly intelligent woman uh, who was like top of her class in med school before as she- As was her friend As Nina. was her friend. They were probably the two best students and, in the class. So yeah. that's what made me think maybe she was, you know, doing a chess move thinking, you know, 10 moves ahead. And as soon as this guy walked in the coffee shop, maybe she- started unfolding the plan, but I, I couldn't really tell because- I couldn't tell either. Because they had the whole middle scene where it seemed yeah. like he was almost a halfway- And okay. they were genuinely falling in yes. love and all of that, you Other know. than he's a doctor, so you got to watch out. <laughs> that is not part of the film. That's just a bias yeah. on a certain <laughs> Champ Chesterfield's uh, part. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I did think that it was well directed and well acted. Uh, there were some weaknesses in the script, I believe, but you know, this has been a, a this particular topic has been uh, a little more focused on in in uh, recent years, the last two or three years. And I think up to now, it really, you know, th th this rape and sexual assault, particularly among college students, is not really been seen as a serious societal problem. It's just, you know, oh, they're drinking. Oh, you know, the girls bring it on themselves, blah, blah, blah. But, um, it, you know, this makes you think a little bit about that. And I think it's a different kind of film and, and, uh, and worth watching. Um, uh, so you don't take it so lightly. And um, I asked myself at the end, um, and I mentioned this to you, the title, Promising Young Woman, at the end, by the end, I thought to myself, who was the promising young woman? Was it Cassie or was it Nina? And maybe it was both. But as you watch the film, you do ask yourself, is this a, is this a film about Cassie? Was she the promising young woman whose life fell apart when she lost her friend? Or was it Nina whose life was destroyed uh, one night because she was drunk and was raped? Yeah. All right, so uh, do you think this is a Academy Award style film? Uh, we'll go film overall, and then we'll go performances. Okay. Um, can I go ahead and give my rating? Yes, go ahead and give your I'll rating. I'll tell you what, as I watched the movie, sometimes I thought, oh, I'm giving this like a four. And then as I watched the movie, sometimes I was thinking, oh, heck, I'm giving this a nine or a 10. Well, I so think I, the ending uh, brings it full the circle. Bring, and the ending made it for me, and I gave it an eight. 
Um, I, you know, I've pointed out there's some weaknesses to it, but I do think it's one of, I'll tell you, I thought it was one of the better movies I've watched in the past year. Um, I think it will be an Academy Award, you know, particularly if they have 10 films yes. like they always do. Now, five, I don't know. But, um, and I think Mulligan is, she is outstanding, definitely deserves a nomination. And in fact, I've read that she's one of the front yes. runners along with Frances McDormand for No Man Land. Um, so, uh, and of course, Viola Davis too, yes. who we talked about. So I think it's gonna be a, a tough year on the, you know, actress front for a great competition. Um, so yeah, I would have to say yes. I don't know about direction. I mean, is Emerald Fennell, um, is she going to be best director nominee? I don't know. It was pretty well directed when yes, you think about I, it. Was, I actually think the direction was probably better than the overall film. Script, yeah. Uh -huh. um, I, I would definitely think Carrie Mulligan deserves. Um, yeah. She carried this film and did a wonderful job in it. Um, Film-wise, I, I really enjoyed the film. Now, if we're going to 10 deep uh, so far this year, yeah, yeah, it probably cracks it. Mm -hmm. But do I think it's like, would I even put it as a favorite as a Academy Award film? Film overall. Uh, I, I don't know if I could go that far, but right. I, I do think the ending full circles this uh, perfectly and uh, really nails it. So I could definitely see it being nominated. I do think uh, Carrie Milligan definitely deserves a nomination. It, yeah. it I think is one of the best performances I have seen. So what did you year. rate it? I rated it a seven. Seven, overall. I said eight, so, yeah. Okay. So I yeah. I did like it. it that and Tenet so far this year. Yeah, see, Tenet I did not like, but yes. it'll, you know, that's just a difference in movie taste. I yes. I I like to throw if we're done with Promising Young Woman. We're done with Promising Young Woman. I just like to throw out that one of the movies we're not going to review that I I, I just want to mention briefly is a movie called Pieces of of a woman. I think that's the full title. And um, I watched it. It's on Netflix as well. I watched it uh, recently too. And I just want to throw out, um, it's a hard movie to watch. It certainly isn't a perfect movie. I don't know that it would be a best picture nominee. Um, but it, it's, a, and it is a story about a couple who loses a, uh, their baby. It's born, stillborn, and they have a trial against the midwife who, um, brought uh, who was there uh, with them. And um, uh, the thing is, it's really not about that. It's about the woman character and what she goes through um, as, and uh, her interactions with people, how it is actually Pieces of a Woman is a great title. But the reason I want to mention it is I did think it was a very good movie. And uh, Virginia Kirby, I hope I'm saying her name right. Yes stars in it and she is i if she needs to get an academy award nomination for sure she was so so good in this film and portrayed the feelings of this woman i mean it was just i i just was stunned by how good she was in the film and i also think an old timer ellen burston plays her mother and i thought she was quite good too so i just want to well throw if a you're looking for, for an film. uplifting story over the weekend uh. it, no it's very dark and depressing <laughs> but it is well, it's well done and i think an interesting film all right so it, if it might come back around if it gets some Oscar nominations, but uh, I am not in for that uplifting movie yeah, over the I weekend. So I, I've crossed it off for right now. I don't now. know if men would like that. I, that's a, a stereotype, mm -hmm. but it probably We is. will be back uh, next week uh, for Denzel Washington's new movie. Now the I'm blanking. The Little Things. The Little Things. Uh, we will be back for that one next week. Rami so, Malek. You know, Rami Malek. Jared Leo. Malek, I mean, that's a Washington, three you know. Academy Award winners there. Um, I don't know if it will be any good, but it has stars and it has Denzel. And it has action, <laughs> so we're watching it. So that will be our next movie on the slate. Be sure to follow us all on GreenLightNetwork.org, GreenLight Network on Facebook, and GreenLight Network on YouTube. That's our show, and we're out.